Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome, welcome, welcome to our... Wait, it's Tuesday today? Who streams on a Tuesday? Nobody streams on a Tuesday, that's a crazy time to stream! And yet, here we are! Can you justify this? Because I think I can bring it up just a little bit. There we go! Um, yeah! It's Tuesday, but today is the official release date of the 1.0 version of Surviving the Aftermath, which has gone through a long early access period. Um, but it is now officially fully released uh, and uh, available on a number of different platforms. For a long time, it was an Epic Games exclusive during the early access, but now it's uh, I'm playing it on Steam over here. Uh, this is a sponsored stream. Paradox has sponsored the stream for the release of Surviving the Aftermath, but I'm really happy because who doesn't love builder games? Who doesn't love the... I was gonna say sort of post-apocalyptic setting, but really this is just 2020, 2021. That's the vibe we got going on. Halco, hey Halco! <laughs> Thank you very much. Hold on, I gotta open up the uh, proper strip page over here so I can read that. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, we got gift subs from Warwolf. You know, it's funny, Warwolf. We're just talking about um, the old 80s TV show Airwolf, and every time I see your username, I think about Airwolf. So good timing there, but thank you very much for the gift subs. That is really incredible. Incredibly generous. Thank you so much. And yeah, Halco with the uh, Whiskey and Chocolate Fun contribution who says, Radiation poisoning for everyone! Or be eaten by a radiated, mutated, mutant rat. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I've been pla practicing this morning, uh, surviving the aftermath, and um, a lot can go wrong. A lot has gone wrong. Yeah, helicopters doing bear rolls. I mean, helicopters can do bear rolls. It was a supersonic stealth helicopter. I don't know, whatever. It was cool to me as a kid. Mr. Brightside, thank you very much for the gift subs as well. Holy cow, it's making me think it's September, except it's not, it's November. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for supporting the channel. We are going to dive into the game very quickly here because we just got two hours and there's a lot to see in this bad boy. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, been watching, oh, Monster Train playlist. Bought the game yesterday, loving your videos. I haven't played it in a while. I know they added a bunch of new content as well. Um, here's something I'd like to get back to. We'll see. How long till mistakes are made? Pretty fast, probably. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so this is a sponsored stream. If you do exclamation mark what game, you can get a link or you can get more information as to where you can pick up Surviving the Aftermath yourself. There's also a big image down below uh, that you can click on. That'll bring you to the relevant page. All right. We're here to play video games. Let's play some video games. 0.5 seconds until mistakes are made. Oh, misclicked. There you go. Uh, new game. So, <clears throat> flavor texting. Modern civilization is gone. It fell apart in a time when rivaling superpowers fought over power and ideology. You know, this stupid fiction is just so unrealistic. Anyway. Too focused on themselves, no one noticed what was coming until it was too late. Skies rained down fire as thousands of comets and massive objects pummeled the inner solar system. On Earth, cities were leveled and replaced by vast wastelands. As nations vanished, the remaining factions waged decade-long wars over scraps until there were no armies left to command. Now, we are all that remains, looking for a new home, looking for a way to start over in the age we call the Aftermath. All right. Um, you know what, I'll leave the tutorial message on. They're actually very unintrusive in this game. Uh, just little sort of stuff that shows up in the top left corner where you're getting alerts anyway, which is kind of nice. It's not a, it's not the same sort of like, hold your hand, you're gonna be doing the same thing for 30 minutes kind of tutorial kind of vibe. All right, challenge. In a post-apocalyptic world, dangers are everywhere and decisions, and every decision can be a matter of life and death. Everyone has felt the desperation and longing to give up, but from now on, we take control. We decide what our fate will be and how challenging the road ahead of us is. So one, two, or three. The first, I think, four categories over here are basically determining the difficulty in a few different ways. Um, so this one, this first page is fairly generic. I don't know exactly what this tweaks. Probably, you know, negative events and things like that. Uh, three, two, let tell you what, let's go two over here because it's still new-ish to the game. We want to make sure we don't get obliterated in the first, um, in the first half an hour. We got to go for the stream. So it's a tough road to walk, but never unfair. Medium, challenging, but fair. Perilous road ahead. <laughs> Four. Then we've got catastrophes or cat ass trophies. Catastrophes are still sweeping across the continents. Extreme weather conditions and natural disasters have become part of everyday life. This this as good as it gets, or should we push deeper into the wasteland? So these include um, falling meteors, 
uh, probably affects um, uh, droughts and winter storms, which are no disasters that can happen over here. I mean, we maybe we should go middle of the road and everything, which will probably be fairly challenging, but not doom us. Uh, Krieg says two, Cyberdude says one, and actually for the cast trees, I'd almost wonder about only going one here, because um, they can really, if you don't have enough of a buffer of protection, this is the sort of thing that can really go and shut you down. Lots of votes for, votes for two, though. We'll go with two. That's going to be okay. I think we'll go two across the board. Environment. Destruction of unimaginable scale can be seen throughout the planet. Nature's delicate cycle was broken as the bombardment of different catastrophes never stopped. Once lush areas turned to dry, irradiated dust bowls, and now cover the scarred land. It is the same everywhere we've been. So we're going to go with two. The world is desolate and unforgiving. There's a balance between fertile and barren. So if you go here, lots of fertile soil, easy to grow. Here, less so. So again, we'll strike the balance in here. One for balance. One, no one to mix it up. No, we'll skip, skip it two. Survivors. Scouring resources from the wasteland has become more difficult and dangerous as the years pass. What is left is usually contaminated or just broken. We've managed through a combination of survival skills and luck. There have been encounters with other survivor groups as well. So this is one of the things where it. I don't believe this has... Um, well, maybe the survivors does, but this probably has more of a front-loaded change rather than a long-term change of the things. So starting with more resources right away is going to be very helpful. If plenty of survivors, you're starting survivors and it doesn't affect how often the others come. Again, it just means we can start quicker, um, but three, three, please. We get some requests for three over here. Oh, no. There's actually quite a few asks for one over here. Maybe one for fast start. You know what? Since we do have a limited time for the stream, yeah, let's go one for the faster start over here. I think that's a great idea. Okay, now we get to ideology, which does not affect our difficulty. Um, what I think this does is there's a tech tree. Um, and so there's the main central tech tree, which is how you unlock buildings. And as far as I can tell, that is fixed. But then sort of adjacent to it, there's these extra bonuses that you can unlock for more efficiency in different areas and whatnot. And I think the ideology impacts uh, what bonuses are going to be available. Um, so we'll give you a pretty significant um, difference in the feeling of the game, uh, what's easier, what's harder, what you have more of. Uh, so over here, we've got trust on basic survival skills. Tech focus would be survival and efficiency. Two is aim for progress and technology, which tech focus, large scale production. And finally, take care and protect the people. Tech focus, health and safety. Health and safety gone mad. <laughs> Do some votes for three over here, actually quite a few. And since we went one for survivors, a three here would balance everything out, wouldn't it? Mwah. Uh, depending on N on my mood, I'd probably personally always go with three in survival scenarios, says Dances with Dirt. I mean, and if you're going to go and rebuild a civilization in the wasteland of the world, someone whose name is Dances with Dirt actually is probably a pretty good go for. The OSHA run, yes, OSHA approved. It's health and safety gone mad. All right. We get to choose our specialist. Now, we will be able to rename these once we're in the game, I believe. Uh, hey, Tristel Mundo, thank you very much for that. What does that have to say? Uh, Tristel says, hey, Quill, don't let us die too soon. I'd like to see the beaver moon on Friday. Wouldn't mind growing an extra arm, though. So, yeah, there's, um, there's a special moon. So, depending on how you define it, Either it'll be at like a month with two full moons or it's like the 13th full moon. Anyway, there's a couple of different ways to define it, but um, there's special moons. Actually, every moon of the month has a nickname, but having that extra one that's often called the blood moon or whatever, it gets the extra name. And I think we're also going to get a full lunar eclipse with this one, which is going to be amazing. I think it can last up to three and a half hours, depending on where you are. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the names, it's not going to be hashtag name. We did do the Extra Life charity live stream uh, last weekend. We're going to be, I'm going to be pulling names out of the, uh, out of uh, people who donated to Extra Life for that to name our specialist. But I don't think I can name this on this screen. I think I named them on the next one. However, we do pick classes. So there's a few different ones over here. Scavenger, fighter, scientist, scavenger, scout, Scientists, I mean, there's a bunch of different copies and they have different stats distributed in different ways. The scientists tend to research much more quickly. Basically, if we find um, uh, places on the world map where we can gain some research, the scientists will do it much faster. Whereas um, the scouts tend to move a lot faster. You can see eight action speed over here. Fighters obviously better in combat. Scavengers are better at just, um, they just recover resources faster. Everyone can do the work just as good. I guess the one exception might be the fighter. Um, they're, they're, I guess they might be more successful 
in that. So if we're going to kick any specialist in a category, I might like to get a fighter at least. And then after that, for a second specialist, I think I'm pretty flexible. Honestly, an early scout might not be the worst thing in the universe. Goth chick oh, over here. Hex. I mean, you're right. She's pretty cool looking. And obviously we do like science, right? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. Fighter scientist. And then we are going to pick our flag. I'm going to go with, oh, I don't know, the Brussels sprouts. In green? In blue. I think in green. Actually, the orange isn't bad. Ooh, black? Mmm. Why is there sprouts? Because I asked them to put them in. <laughs> There's also a Brussels sprout flag in Surviving Mars. Black Brussels. Whoa, Black Brussels. Bam, bam, bam. All right, I like it. Let's do it. Continue. Colony name. New New Brussels. What could... Should it be... Cut? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? I think we're going to know the answer to that question very, very soon. U.S. Brussels. All right, so there you go. We had a little recap, and we're gonna go in with 70% difficulty. Boom, boom, boom. We would have been 75%, I think, if we'd taken twos across the board, but we did take the one, one. Bump, 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 bump. Motto, let's sprout a new society. Motto, it will go wrong. Specialists are most effective on the world map. Yeah, the art is cool. I like the release announcement. People who were at uh, PDXCon in 2019 in uh, Germany. They had a really cool booth set up for that. Perfect model for an apocalypse survival game, right? So this is quite different from when we played it a year ago. The the initial setup over here, we've got this little settler. Um, and what's interesting is later on, we will be making our own sort of these settlers. These are specialists that we give a specific job to, which is gonna tie in very nicely to where it starts. But there we go. Looking on the lookout for a new home. Um, what we have to do is click here. New world. Is in ruins. Oh, there's voiceover. Things once considered mundane are hard to find, and habitable land is no exception. I realize it's pretty quiet, a though. A settler has finally found a spot for a new colony. With a place to call home, it is time for a new beginning. Welcome to the aftermath, survivor. So what we have to do with this settler is we build a campfire, then we set off a single signal flare for the other colonists to come over here. So, oh, yeah, I did that already. We just go build, campsite, and we put it anywhere. I think I'm going to put it, like, uh, kind of as far back as I can, because one of the things is the uh, campsite does do a little bit of scouting in the area, so it reveals things. Also, um, a lot of resources are going to be brought here. It's their first storage area. So as, as far back as possible, because this map is actually huge. Like, it just keeps going and going and going. There's a lot of space over here. So since it's going to be the center of our base, I think I'm going to go into, ahead and do that. Um... So that's the edge of the explored space. So maybe we'll put it right over here. I think I like that. Boom. All right. So our settler's gonna go. He's got that big, uh, that big backpack, like, uh, is it Death Stranding where they've got like the, the people running all over the place? Did we just get a honk honk? What kind of game is this exactly? Apocalyptic City Builder? Exactly that. All right, so we've got this. Now we can go into the build screen and see a few more things that we have access to, although certain things are still a bit limited. We haven't actually brought our, our, our colonists here. There, there was the one settler, but he doesn't really count as a, as a regular person right now. We haven't established the base. What I have to do is I have to click here and shoot the flare. But we can place a few things. We've got a few pre-mades. Uh, we've got a, a ready-made water collector. And uh, we've got a couple of tents ready to put down and things. But the thing is, I could just send the flare up immediately. There's no reason not to, I suppose. If we zoom out, we actually get the world map. And those of you who have seen this game before know that this sort of overland world map exploration is a major part of the game. This is what we're going to be doing with our specialist. Uh, so we've got our settlement in New New Brussels over here. And we've also got some points of interest nearby that we're going to be checking out. Um, all right, let's... I'm going to... Oh, we can't even build roads until we got colonists. Okay, you know what? Let's just shoot the flare off, get our colonists here. Make Let's start off our colony properly. Cobra chickens. Oh yeah, the geese. 
Your first colonists have arrived. Prompted by the signal flare, the rest of the group arrives at the prepared campsite. Despite all the hardship ahead, it's time to rebuild and turn this hostile place into a home. All right, and there we go, first settlers. So we've got 12 total colonists right now, although four of them are children. I believe the children, it said something um, somewhere, it, children can help carry boxes or go to school. So they don't, they don't actually get assigned to the carrier job, but I think they do haul a little bit of stuff. So they're not completely useless, only mostly useless, as of course all children are. Um, what I wanna do is I do wanna plan some roads right away. Now that does take a little bit of construction time, but it doesn't use any material. And I just wanna kinda of organize kind of a bit of a, of a grid before we get going too much. We'll connect this road up over here. We've got our central campsite. I'm just gonna go and stretch out a little bit. I love that we have water nearby in my practice map that I was playing today uh, to remind myself of the game goes. I had no water nearby and it was very frustrating. Um, so we'll plan on probably going around this. Okay, so we got a little bit of a road structure at least to get started. So things we need for our people. Obviously we need shelter, food, water, and at some point we gotta start producing some stuff. Need a chimney for the kids to clean? Yeah! Um, so we do have some tent prefabs. So these have room for three colonists each. Uh, we also get these emergency shelters over here, which have room for six colonists. Um, I, we've got the two tent prefabs, so we're clearly putting them down. The emergency shelters also have a decreased birth rate. Privacy, bit of an issue. So most of the colonists don't want to get their hanky-panky on uh, in front of such other crowd, although apparently some of them don't mind. So yeah, we'll plan these, these tents out. So they're five wide. Oh, it's actually gonna be quite convenient. I can fit a pair in here and then maybe extend the block. Alternatively, what we could do is do this and then sort of, you know, have some a longer block, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll set up a quad of tents. That'll be enough room for 12 people, which is exactly what we've got. Oh yeah, don't use fertile ground. That's an excellent point. So um, we do have these maps over here for different things, including soil fertility. Okay, our green spots over here, here's only yellow. There's red ground over here. As long as it's not contaminated with pollution and it ain't, we're okay. Maybe I'll build some housing over here instead. And I think, well, we can make the blocks quite nice if I do this, but um, oops, I was supposed to hold shift there. I was going to say there's some wood in the way right now. So I'll just build it here and we'll do kind of a mini block. Maybe it'll get extended that way. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But those are the prefabs. So we'll get them, them going on and we'll plan on probably having a dirt road that kind of extends out over here as well. All right, let's unpause. Some of this will start going, and those are prefabs, so they'll build up very, very, very quickly. We also want to get a stockpile and a food storage down. You can fit some amount of sto storage inside of this building, but not a ton. Um, so I'll just build a cross. Yeah, it's squares, it doesn't really matter. We'll do this, and we'll put a food storage over here. Now, what's interesting about these is you can also designate an area where they work. So the stockpile over here, you can put a work area and they will pick up certain resources around uh, over here. So your, your carriers, those are the people without without real jobs, right? So we have eight adults, so we have eight carriers right now because they, we don't have official work for them right now. So they transport resources, build and repair. Carriers are incredibly important. You don't want the carriers to go to zero or a lot of things will grind to a halt. Um, and one of the things the carriers will do is they will go and look at the the catchment area the work area of our stockpiles like this same thing with the food storage if we move that and when you do select it it does put a little icon over it so we've got some berries over here so we can tell our peeps to go and pick that up over there now we do have our two specialists over here you can use your specialists within the base you can you can move them around you can give them orders uh if there's a construction to do or even resource gathering like i can click over here on the berries and they will collect that however what we probably don't want to do with our specialists is send them out into the world but we can't do that until we have upgraded our gate. So for now, I guess our specialists will hang out over here. I think what I'll do is with both my specialists, I'm gonna get both of them to come over here and collect the wood because we're gonna need some building material to get things started and that's gonna be okay. Some people are still homeless. We're gonna actually, what I should do is clear out the wood over here. Let me do that. I'm gonna move this work area here and same thing with the specialists because we're clearly gonna wanna build in this area. So let's work on this area to clear some of it out. We've got some berries nearby. First of all, if nothing else, it's just gonna minimize some of the walking time, so we'll get that down over there. All right, let's see what else we can build. We can do our roads. Uh, we can build up the gate. I guess uh, we need 190 wood and 175 plastic for that. Uh, we don't have quite enough for it. We might wanna use those resources for something else right now. <gasps> I didn't know growing up's getting a free DLC. That's very exciting. We're gonna want more, some more housing because right now people are gonna be cranky, but let me get back to it. Okay, food for, uh, sources. We can do a trapper 
So densely forested area, we trap small game and things like that. We can also fish. I kind of like the idea of setting up the fishing post over here since we do have some water nearby. Um, yeah, I'll set up something like this. Maybe a little closer? Looks like about that. Let's get the road adjusted. Oops, not trapper. I wanted to click on the road. And do a little something, something like this. Excellent. Sad looking water. I mean, it's pretty bad, but everything's pretty bad. Even though I'm going to extend the buildings, uh, the housing over here, I, I do feel bad about having some homeless people right now. So what I'll do is I will get a pair more tents so we don't, we don't have anyone homeless over here. There we go. All right, carriers are still going to help do that. That's going to be okay. And yet, these green bits over here, these are tutorials. You know, say, select your colonists. It's like, okay, well, that, that's fine. All right, I'll select this colonist over here. Uh, it's Max. So, we can rename all the colonists, but I think that might be a little time-consuming. I will rename the specialists, though. And again, we're going to be pulling names from the people who donated to Extra Life. So, our fighter is going to be Guti. Guti, welcome to the colony. I hope you don't die too quickly. And instead of Hex over here, although that is a great name, it's going to be Arskamo. It's also a pretty good name. So thank you very much, people who um, who donated towards Extra Life for a really good cause. Now prepare to die. Oh, that's true. I didn't check efficiency over here. Was it bad? Let me cancel this for a sec. Oh. Yeah, cancel construction. I think there's a slight delay. Was the, the efficiency not good? Oh, 0%. Why is it 0? There you go. It's 100 over here. Why was it 0 over there? Have you guys uh, reminded me of that? I just assumed it was going to be okay over there. But you know what happens when you assume? You embarrass yourself on Twitch. I think that road's connected. Okay. We'll set up some water collection in here afterwards. <laughs> cool man, your last highlighted messages just says to check your last highlighted message. <laughs> Hex is no more. Hex a gone? Boo! Boo! That's terrible! Alright, I'm gonna let the fishery finish and then I'm gonna get started on our water sourcing. Actually, I guess I could plan it out now. Now, we can, we've got a prefab for water collector, which seems like a pretty good idea. It needs to be on the shore. There's, there we go, shore and 100% efficiency. I don't like that it's we're having to boot down some trees to make room for it. That's a bit unfortunate. Listen to me, I'm talking like an elf. All right, water collection over there. And we can also build wells and things too. But yeah, it's nice that we have the prefab. We may as well make use of it. Excellent. Was it 88% over here? But this one said 100 and this one said 100, did it not? Pretty sure. Hexagon is indeed the best gun. Hexagons are good at, like, packing. Packing efficiency versus, like, material circumference. Because, like, for a given area, the thing that uses... Because there's, there's efficiencies with circles, but circles don't pack very well. So hexagons are quite good for that, I think. All right, so we have positive water over here. Uh, we don't have much in the way of water storage. Well, since we've got 300 water storage, I guess the campfire over here, yeah, it can store up to 300 water, which is good. This number here is not the amount of water we have stored. This is the um, net sort of positive. We are generating two more water than we currently need. Uh, so that means we're in good shape. If this number goes negative, we'll start to extract from storage. While it's positive, water is going to be consistently stored. We probably want the water to come in a little bit faster than that. Most likely we'll build a well or maybe another water source, but we don't have to stress about it quite yet. Let's go down the rest of the category see here and see if there's anything else we're desperate for. Stockpile, food storage is good. We don't have a gate yet, so we can't build a warehouse. Uh, we've got a little bit of food coming in from the fishing pier, theoretically, hopefully. Uh, right our consumption is outstripping our production, but we'll go and check on the uh, fishery relatively soon for that. Uh, water's okay. We are going to get a clean water storage later, but we don't need that right yet. All right, more resources can come in. Now, early on, we are going to get our wood just by having our carriers working in our uh, in our stockpile over here and picking up stuff that's just lying around the map. Same thing as our specialists here, actually. I'm going to send out some specialists over here to grab some wood from these areas. And actually, maybe these wooden ruins over here. So we're going to keep that going in okay. Um, 
So I'm not too worried about the wood, but plastic is definitely something we need probably fairly early. So I'm gonna get a recycler so we can start extracting things from scrap piles, like the scrap pile over here. So I'll build a recycler. I'll build it here. I'm gonna leave a gap in for a road. Like so. Uh, ooh, getting reminded about hunting in the tutorial. So we should open this up, take a look at living beings, and we can see some critters all over the place that we can set up for hunting. We may in fact do that, but not right now. <laughs> um, that was your fertile. Well, some of it is. Like, this is on the edge of the fertile zone. That's true. But it's also very close to this. I guess I could build it. Well, the berries are currently in the way. I'm not going to stress. There must be better. Yeah, it's, this is a better fertile zone. We'll probably just make a bunch of farming over there or something like that. Oop, turn this off. Adjusting worker slots. So, yes, for each building... When it gets completed, for example, uh, do I still have a filter on? Or is this, oh, this is just a tutorial. Yeah. So we can add or remove workers from a building to determine how many people are going to work over here if we want. Um, if there's also a production limit, we'll get a pop-up in the tutorial soon to set this. Um, if the production limit gets reached in a building, the workers that are assigned to it will act as carriers uh, during that time. Okay, this little work area is now done. We're just going to move it over here to keep clearing some wood out, please. Thank you very much. Where are the beavers at? It's like Timberborn. <laughs> yeah, grabbing these berries is going to be nice. Um, to the point where I think... Yeah, you're still working there. You are both busy tearing apart these wooden ruins. That's going to be okay. Excellent. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Please don't discuss optimal stacking shapes. You'll summon Matt Parker and his rhombic dodecahedrons. Hmm. Sounds like something I'm going to have to Google after. All right. So what's coming in great? It's the plastics that are currently shorting us for the gate. We definitely want to get the gate going because then we can start sending our, yep. um, right. our specialists over here out in the world. Construction complete. Recycler. Here, I'll set a second job there for now. And, I mean, the work area doesn't really matter because it's going to cover both these plastic sources. I'm going to say we're going to keep a limit of, um, I don't know, some things are quite a lot. I don't know, 500 plastic, which is probably overkill. I do like setting the limits, though, because if we do end up with a bunch of these, it's kind of nice to have the people just chill and act as carriers for a little bit. But we want the plastic count to increase. I'm going to be happy with the two workers over here, and then we can build the gates and start doing things with our specialists. Uh, opening the gate also means we can, um, let me move my head here to something like that, uh, means we should be able to get new uh, colonists as well, which is going to be really important. Your colonists can have babies, but it's really slow. Optimal packing equals reduce all substance to liquid. Wow. Now, I could, you know what the recycler, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the work area like this so that it's specifically get, going to grab all the plastic out of here, which is going to guarantee that this gets cleared out uh, sooner, especially since it is a slightly fertile area and that's going to be nice. Um, so water storage is going up. Still thinking I might add a well, because the thing is the uh, water collector over here does work really wet quickly, but it does need a worker, whereas a well doesn't need a worker. But I don't know if it produces a ton. Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll speed things up. Isn't everyone a survivor, but only our people are colonists? Well, there's that. So, oh yeah, tutorial set a production limit, but I've already done that. Thank you. Click on it and you hit OK, and then if you've already done it, then it goes away. But yeah, it's actually quite a good idea. So you can see the tutorial is not very intrusive, but it really does do a pretty good job of introducing all the key concepts to you. Um, there's So there's research. There's multiple different research categories. And this is where um, our, our pick of our tech focus, I think, comes into play. Because, I th again, I think, unless there's some difference in the late game tech, I think all the key text, which is in the middle area over here, um, is the same. But I think it's these extra little bits over here that are just kind of bonuses. They're optional technologies, but I think this is where your tech focus um, has an impact. So, uh, we for make science points, we have to do that out in the world, basically. Mostly looking to reclaim technology that's out there, which is one of the reasons opening that first gate is going to be quite important. All right, plastic numbers are definitely going up, which is great. The wooden ruins here are almost torn apart, which is going to free up some space, which is really wonderful to see. There you go. That deposit is empty, which probably means my specialists are going to finish off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plan the gate upgrade now. 
We don't quite have enough plastic, but we can start getting the wood over there and everything. As I say, uh -huh. these guys are going to become idle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage them. What you need? We'll just have them. Uh, tell you what, we'll split the job over here. Just trying to clear out more of this territory, make some room for everything else. Tech trees. The only trees a true dwarf love. There you go. Ooh, something's off with a shelter. We have our first in-game decision. Not everybody is equally skilled in the art of building, but one of the colonists seems extremely. Ideology effects of turquoise text only. Thanks, Ghost Boy. Okay. So, hmm. His tent looks like it could collapse at any moment. It's a poor, poorly so sewed? Sewn? Sewed, I guess. Tarps. Slowly rip apart. Regardless, the colonist insists that he knows what he's doing. Uh, we can spend 30 woods to improve it. I'm going to do that. It'll probably lead to happiness. And it does, which is great. Colonists are going to get slightly happier, which is probably going to be fairly important for things. Look at him haul boxes over here. Look at him go. <laughs> um, Vordy Ren, I'm going to just remind you that this is a sponsored stream, and therefore, I don't like to give uh, specific comparisons between different things. Because, you know... Gotta be, gotta be savvy. Um, oh, you're just talking about differences. Um, okay, so surviving the aftermath is compared to end zone is a little bit more. I'm gonna say intimate. Um, the number of colonists I think are gonna be a little bit more. It's more limited, so each one is more important as opposed to a large on mass number, right? So like if you're comparing something like a rim world to city skylines, right? Well, city skylines is, is ridiculous with the number of people we're talking about, but that's that's sort of the vibe. Whereas end zones are gonna have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I think here it's it's just a little bit more more specific and involved with each one. I mean, we can literally rename all the individual colonists if we want. I just want to play a little faster than that, even though it would be kind of cool. Uh, all right, so plastic is still being brought over here. Hopefully we're processing it as quickly as we can. I don't believe that our specialists can help out with collecting that, unfortunately. Oh, this zone here, this work uh, area is done. Um, could clear out that one, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just get that started over here. Fair amount of wood going on. So meals, how are we looking? Production is still not quite there. So we might want to do more fishing. But we don't have an outhouse yet. Colonists have a hard time taking care of their hygiene in the wasteland. Filthy, filthy colonists quickly become discontent or more prone to catching various diseases. Help them out by building an outhouse. Sadly, outhouse also pollute the area around them to keep that in mind when considering their placement. Where are we going to stick our outhouse? I'm not too close to the lake, I would say. Not too close to the fertile area over here. Not too close to the houses. Do we just want to put it like right next to the gate? Because who cares about this area, right? Plus, you know, people returning from the wilderness might be needing to do a poop. Poo Lake Poo! This isn't City Skylines! <laughs> Done. I'm just putting it here. Poopy gate. It's like a political uh, fiasco. It's poop gate. So we're going to use some of our valuable plastic here. But yeah, I guess we do need to... Uh, to let people take care of some of their needs. Now, it'd be really nice if uh, ooh, if some of these colonists chillin' might grow up real quick. We'll see. Uh, our first person has been infected, probably from hanging around near some pollution. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, now got the quest to build a medical tent. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll build it right here. Not in a fertile area. It, next to a big plastic heap, but that's gonna be okay. You can see our number of carriers are going down uh, dramatically because we have so many people starting to be employed in other things. Now, we can still scale back on some of that, but the hope is mostly just that this gate... Oh, there we go. All the material has been brought over. Lovely. Okay, and we're going to send our specialist oot in a boot. Human excrement requires a fair amount of processing to use the fertilizer safety. Yeah, there is some tech we can develop for that. Oh, someone's stealing planks. What? Someone seems to have been stealing. Dude, get your finger out of your nose! A few colonists go to investigate. Oh, it's kids to build a tree fort. A group of rowdy children. So we could tear it down and get some of our wood back, but probably the cost of happiness. No, leave the fort alone. We get a happiness boost. Nice. Get, get, gate. 
And yeah, you can send your specialist to construct if you want things constructed faster. Gathering ammo for his catapult. Congratulations. Oh, the boogers. You've rebuilt the gate and gained access to the world. All right, gate's now open. The vast world stands ready for your specialists to explore. The progress has not gone unnoticed. Soon your colony will begin attracting various folks. Some good, others desperate. Some trickers and those who want to see you destroyed. Arm the gate with colonists or keep some specialists close by to defend yourself for the inevitable raids. Right, so the most valuable thing we can do with our specialists is send them out in the world. However, your specialists are also your chief, chief fighters and can defend your colony. So there is some risk of sending everyone out. How may I help? However, we're going to go ahead and send both of them out right now. We need to see what's out there. Oh, group of survivors has arrived at the gate. Well, maybe before we accept them, we'll make sure this is guarded. And actually, with my specialists, let me keep them around for a second. Because sometimes when you accept some survivors, there's an attack I've noticed. A ragged bunch shuffles slowly towards the gate. Seven adults, two children, no elders. They've got some supplies with them. Um... Oh, and they're coming with a specialist, another fighter here. So I'm going to accept this. I think the first group of survivors happens more or less automatically when you build the gate. This is going to be fantastic. We'll obviously need some more housing, but we've got some new workers, which is great. We're going to rename Gorky over here. So we've got two fighters now, um, which might be overkill. But honestly, I think I'm not complaining about that. Uh, so the next one on the list is video game history. Uh, let's just call you VGH your initials because it's apparently there's a, a character limit over here yes. video game history is going to be one of our fighters lovely uh colonist aaron is infected that's too bad we do have some homeless okay colonists i'm once again or specialist i'm once again going to tell you to go out into the world map please and what we're going to do is we're going to build what can i build over here oh we have access to decoration now oh beautification we could beautify the area around the houses but I think we'll wait a bit on that. I will build some extra tents now, though. Um, so we have nine homeless, so we need at least three more tents. I think I'll go ahead and just build four. Like so. And right around here as well. Okay. All right, so our specialists are hitting the world map. So I'm just going to let the last one get gutty over here. There we go. They're all out here now. So this is the area we know about. We do have one scientist, Ark, Ark, Arskamo over here is a scientist. So I will send her to this museum, which has 500 science points in it. So, and she works really fast. She generates 250 science points per hour. So 24 hours from now, she will have extracted all the science from the museum. And it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Um, Gutty and VGH are both fighters. Interestingly enough, VGH does have better movement speed. Uh, but may have lower stats somewhere else. Attack is 25. I don't know. They might they might be about the same. Anyway, we'll send one out. Um, no, actually, Gutty only does 20 damage and moves less quickly than yes. VGH. But they might have another difference in scavenging or research, or maybe VGH is just better. I don't know. Who knows? All right. Set up new people close to the outhouse. Yeah. I mean, it's good and bad, right? You don't have to run as far at night when the when when business calls. On the other hand, you're gonna need, be near the stinky outhouse, and no one likes that. So the tutorial is suggesting we might want to build a camp or a, a scout tower. So our campfire, which is over, where did I put it? Right over here. Did reveal a certain area, right? Which is why we have vision. We can see certain resources, but we can expand that with a scout tower. Um, we don't really need to rush the scout tower exactly because we have enough resources as is. But just for the sake of, you know, satisfying the tutorial, I'll build a scout tower on the absolute edge of our vision over here. And it'll expand stuff out. Several construction zones are lacking resources. Well, we don't have any plastic renounces, that's probably it. We also have negative water. Let's do something about the water right away. So I'd like to build a well. So fertile, yeah. So the more fertile the tiles, the more water the well will produce. It doesn't need a worker, which is nice. Although it will sort of get in the way of some of our fertile tiles. Really, we'd want it over here for a hundred percent, because over here, I could just build one over here. Let me start with that. That'll put us back positive on water, and we'll see. So the game's suggesting we build a warehouse now, which is for quality tool, um, uh, refined items like tools and medicine, because right now we don't really have storage for that. I'll build the well first. 
<laughs> Out of yes, this today is the release. November sixteenth. Today is the one release for Surviving the Aftermath, which is why Paradox sponsored this stream. Boom, boom, boom. And even I played the version um, right before this release version, and even between it, which is only you know. A month old or something like this and this one there's been some major changes they've been really active with the development i think i'd like to centralize our storage i don't know maybe over here this is kind of barren soil so we'll get the warehouse there just to satisfy the tutorial and everything all right tents are going up we only have one person homeless but that'll fix itself relatively soon in three days we'll get another specialist which is great and yeah the specialist on the world map so the world map has this 24 hour tick i think it's on 24 hour cycle this little green line that fills around whenever it's done that's when the um we'll get another tick of production from these guys and potentially we'll be able to assign them some of those jobs i remember the very earliest beta for this um the specialists weren't on this sort of global tick rate and so it was always kind of annoying because um they would they would come up for their task a different time also um, when you're on the world map, the game is effectively paused. It goes into this sort of turn-based mode that's different. So you don't have to worry about losing efficiency with your specialists. We do have various uh, milestones that we've completed. I mean, we got our first settlers over here. We've also gone into the world, which is we built the gate. Uh, other things we could do, little town, 25 population, defeat 10 hostile wild animals, have a child born in the colony, research some techs, and so on and so forth. That'll be really reminiscent, I think, to people who have played Surviving Mars those sorts of milestones, which are always a great way to uh, kind of motivate you to move forward. And yeah, your difficulty uh, rating affects the amount of prestige you get from all these things. Oh, uh, I'm going to free up one of the uh, the guards at the gate right now. We'll go down here. Just oh, actually, we do we have lots of transporters? No, let's go for it. We have the water shortage, but hopefully the, um, the well is going to be built. It's still waiting for a little bit of plastic. I might go and build another water collector as well. Anyway, our tents are good, which is nice to see. Let's bring the speed up to three. <laughs> oh, science point gain. Yes! All right, so we got our first tick of science points. 250 points just came in. Yep, we will start reaching our check. So, now we've got some interesting decisions to make. There are a lot of really important things. Uh, certainly, for example, getting farming up would be pretty good. Um, the skinning's not bad either. It upgrades the hunting cabin so that uh, when if we were to hunt, so the hunting cabin gives us food, um, we can upgrade the hunting cabin so that it also produces fiber, which we use to make clothing. However, farming, we can also get some fiber from that because we can get fibers out of it. So those are obviously pretty good. Communal eating gets us all the way up to a cookhouse where we take our raw food and make meals, which are much more nutritious. So we get a lot more bang for our nutrition buck with communal eating. Um, other resources though, there's some pretty key things like metal scavenging so that we can actually get uh, metal as a resource, which we can't at the start of the game. Uh, Handicraft gives us access to a tool shop and tailor so we can make more tools, uh, which if uh, your citizens don't have tools, they don't work as efficiently, so that's obviously bad. And the tailor, which makes clothing for them, which protects them from cold and various damage and stuff, so also very important. And eventually, concrete scavenging, which we need some, for some more advanced construction as well. Uh, we've got infrastructure as well, water pipes. So right now we can collect water for drinking, but some of the buildings later on need water to be able to produce things. Uh, for example, the cookhouse actually needs access to water to work. So before we build the cookhouse, we are going to need water pipes so we can build a water tower. Uh, and later on, some of the buildings will need power. I don't know if you have to rush the infrastructure quite that much. Um, the community upgrades, though, we can upgrade the tents, the crowded tents. We have more space, but I think are less happy making. But getting bunk beds would also let us unlock heavy tarps, which give us 40% more durability to our tents, uh, which means we don't have to repair them often, especially if there's a storm. Education unlocks a school, which gives our, our people traits. Communal living unlocks the next tier of actual housing. Instead of living in tents, they can live in shanties. Still not great, but a hell of a lot better. So obviously that's really good. In safety, there's guardians, which lets you build guard posts. Uh, which can help protect you against invaders, but potentially more valuably is the Frontier Outpost. This lets you convert our specialists that are just running around over here. You can convert them into settlers and they will create their own settlements somewhere that you don't manage directly, but that will produce passive amounts of science or produce more colonists for you and all sorts of really good stuff. Uh, it also gives us access to a really important technology that is flushing. Hazmat Engineering as well lets us build environmental stations to clean up garbage, although we need power for that. So vassals, yeah, kind of like vassals. I kind of think we might want to go into farming. 
think I like that idea. And I mean, it'll pick up the skinning upgrade along the way. Um, which makes me think, hey, we should set up some hunting uh, pretty quickly. Help keep our food up. We have to rush toilets. I can live without. Well, I mean, we have an outhouse. Outhouses are available. Currently occupied. Who was pooping? It's Ella. Ella was pooping. Oh, we got a new event. One more than a bit of wool. Approaches, looking more than a little nervous. She says that she might be able to provide some clothing for the colony. Uh, all right. I don't know where it lists our fiber. Oh, other. So we have 30 fiber right now. Question is, can you trust her? Do we trust her? Do we give her some fiber and hope that she can produce some extra clothing for us? Sure. We got to give her a chance. Oh, we got five clothes out of that. All right. She handed the fiber and seems grateful for the trust. As expected, the work takes some time, but she finally returns with some absolutely stunning traditional garbs. Wearing these will not only keep people warm, but make them look good as well. Bam. So yeah, we have some extra clothes, which is good because if we click on one of our colonists over here, so you can see at the bottom, basic tools down to 69%, which is not as nice as you might think because these tools are degrading, which is going to be start to hurt the, their efficiency. Uh, same thing with the clothing over here. So uh, getting some fresh stuff over there will give you more protection. And then, yeah, some of the uh, some of the colonists might have weapons. So this one has no weapon, for example, but this one has a crossbow. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, we have the water shortage. Yes, we're still waiting on that. We're basically waiting for plastics to come in. Doesn't hurt, help that I started the warehouse. You know, okay, let me prioritize the well uh, by putting a build next. So as we get the plastic, that'll be prioritized and we'll see what happens. Do you have an affiliate link for people looking to purchase? I do not. I mean, um, if you do purchase things on the Epic Game Store and it asks you for um, an affiliate username, you can put Quilly in there. But of course, the game is also available on Steam. There's no affiliate links for that. I do appreciate the thought. Just make sure to hit the uh, link either down below here or in the uh, what game command so that Paradox knows that you're buying it because this channel is awesome and they, can, they should keep sponsoring things on it. Ha <laughs> ha ha ha. All right, uh, come on, well, get built. Still delivering plastic. I mean, we have some water stored. Oh no shit, we're actually literally out of water. Okay, well that's really bad and I should have rushed that sooner. You know what? I'm gonna cancel the warehouse. I'm gonna free up the material just to make sure we've got the plastic immediately for this. We've made a new discovery. Hey, skinning is completed, that's good. Now the well is really far away, so it did take a while for people to get there as well, but it's finally being built. Meanwhile, our specialists are ready to go. Our scientist is done sciencing at the museum. That's great. What I'm gonna do with her is I'm gonna get her to scout a new region over here. So her scouts, um, I guess you don't have a scout stats. I guess the scouts just move faster. So we'll do that. And video game history over here is done scavenging the site. Has found some more clothing and some currency. Uh, so the currency gets added immediately. The clothing, we'd actually have to walk back. I don't think we're in a rush to have the clothing in the base. So rather than go back home and waste time, I'm going to go ahead and just start scouting a new area immediately with video game history over here. Now, come back over there. All right. Build, 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 build. There we go. So now we have positive water. Just barely, but we do. Because we had some thirsty people. We'll clear have to do some more. Berries over here depleted. Uh, this site over here is not working anything. So, there what? There's a double berry stack over there. We'll just make sure to cover this. And over here, I'm just going to move the flag out while I'm paying attention right now. But we do have an injury, but we have a medical tent, right? Yeah, right over here. Medical tent is going to be doing some treatments. So hopefully everything's going to be okay. You get some water northeast region in the overworld map. Uh, no. So you, um, well, not that I know of, um... This site, I think, we just can't access it at all. So, like, the water and stuff that we get is going to be on our own map. We've got a positive number now. We can build a couple more wells. We can build just another uh, water source over here as well, which we might do. Um, basic farming's coming in. But we do have the skinning, so I think what I'm going to do... First, I'm going to take this and extend it out. Kind of like that. It does have to get built, but it doesn't take any material. And it'll minimize some of our walking times. So I've got an achievement. The Great Healer... I have healed, I've healed a hundred colonists now across all the games. Um, we can do a little bit of hunting over here. Not a particularly dense forest, but I think it might be an okay thing to do. Let's 
So yeah, I'll, I'll build this fairly far up, and then we can set some hunting over here, where there's clearly some wild... Actually, this is a really dense forest, and it's not very far from our base. Um, so there's fertile ground here. This is not as fertile. Okay, let's do this. So say it's going to take more plastic? Yeah, but we do have some plastic stored up. Oh yeah, because I took down the uh, warehouse, which I think is still fine right now. We'll have to sort it later, but that's okay. All right, basic farming is complete. I'm going to plan on starting that shortly, but I'm going to start the uh, the trapper first. We do have to queue up some more science, but let me get back to that in a second. Specialist ready for action. Oh, they're all ready. Complete. All right, v video game history is a fighter. There is a bandit camp over here, the Rippers. So we're going to have him Showtime. go and take that. Meanwhile, uh, our Arskamo over here has revealed a new area, including some more research. So I'm going to get her to go and do that because she is a scientist. And that's what she excels at. And then oh, Gutty over here has scavenged this site, gotten some tools and things. I'm going to get you to fight the these rippers over Showtime. here since you're also a fighter and you're pretty decent at that. Excellent. One versus rippers. Yeah, no, he, they're really good, though. My people are awesome. Okay, we can fast forward a wee bit. Build, 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 build. Oh! Rocks falls! Mm -hmm. Everyone dies. So, rocks fell from the, the surface. Oh, we gotta repair this with plastic. Boo! Let's go and take a look at the, um, the building health mode. All right, you're the only building that took any real damage. That much is good. Although, I think one of our colonists was injured by a falling rock. No one's died yet. And of course, it's our medical tent that gets damaged, but at least it didn't go down completely. I think we'll be okay. All right. Work area. 100% efficiency over here. So we'll do that. I guess that's true. When we see deer on the map, we can hunt them manually. And with these guys, you just send them to a densely forested area and they get things done. Um, I can also upgrade you to a hunting cabin, which I will do because we'll also get fibers at the same time. So that seems pretty good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I was going to assign a second employee to that, but I guess I can't do that quite yet. Meteors defy the Geneva Convention. Right? Hitting the medical tent. What the hell, man? Can't do that. So Stella's injured. Hopefully we can help her get her groove back. There you go. Not hurting anymore. Huzzah. Okay, water's positive. Not not dramatically positive, and we don't have the storage for it, so we'll want to do a bit more of that. Okay, back over here. Try to find the 100% spot if we can. There we go, 100%. And... Um, I wonder if I want to set... I'm going to go ahead and set three. There's a production limit. Now, I don't know if this is just for food, like the venison, or the... I guess it is the production limit for the venison. So we can keep, like, 100 units of the raw venison around. Set that as a limit. And I guess we just we just get fibers sort of for free as a side effect of that. Which is going to be nice to get in at a bit of a trickle. So what we might want to do, then, is look into um, into getting our tailor shop so we can keep clothing. Although right now we're good on clothing, which is nice. Tools are going down maybe a little bit. So three of these. We do have farming ready to go. Maybe we don't actually have to rush the farming. Look at all the runes over here. It's quite cool. There's also a, um, a photo mode that you can access. You gain access to more things if you want to make really pretty screenshots. Apparently there's an achievement for opening that. Getting hit by a space rock, not as easily as you may think. All right, specialist ready for action. Let's gutty over here. Oh, yes, please start the attack. Attacking. Excellent, thank you. Pew, pew, pew. There's other settlements, other colonies you can find out there as well, and then you can build trading posts and things. Okay, wooden ruins depleted, but that's okay. Because it does it zooms to the thing that uh, that was um, processing it. So what I can do is I can scooch the uh, the work area a little bit, like this now, because there was a ruin over here, but it's gone. We do have some pollution over here. Getting that cleaned up is going to be important because we are going to get. Um, we are going to get some people sick. If they're walking through these polluted areas, they will get sick. You can see the outhouse over here. Not terribly appealing. So it does pollute the area, but not a wide area with the outhouse. Which, to me, makes sense. I mean, I mean, maybe it does over time. But it's not too shabby. Other colonies, like AI colonies? Yeah, I mean, they're not... I don't think they're... I don't think you go into the colony. They're not, like, fully simulated the same way. But you find them on the map, and I think it, it's how you trade. 
Okay, we do have enough research. We could be researching something else. I could upgrade the hunting place to have to support more workers, and that'll be something nice later on, but right now we don't need. Um, if we are gonna start our farming, we probably want soil studies for the increased planting speed. Um, you know what? I think I will grab the soil studies now. We don't have a ton of excess workers, which is why I'm hesitating starting the farming. Although, maybe. Shift plus mouse scroll makes the work zones larger. I'm sorry, what? <gasps> or control. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's going to save a little bit of micro going forward. Uh, thank you. Can I click on these? I, can't, I don't think I can click on my little target for this because of where it is, but that's okay because I can do it this way. Oh, my God. I mean, you can't make it infinitely large, but that, that will make it just a little easier later on. Can, can, does it work for this? No, this is a fixed one, which I would assume because that would give you a way to cheese the efficiency on these things over here. Okay, good. One day away from this, we got some more whiskey and chocolate. It's Warwolf! Hey, Warwolf, thank you very much. If you leave a row free in back-to-back -back housing, you can later plant plants to raise happiness. See, and that's what I was thinking about too, um, because we do have the, the beauty makers, and that's what I've done in other games like this. I'm like, oh, maybe I should have done that, but I could always tear these down and replace them. I don't think the tents upgrade to shanties. They upgrade to the crowded tents, but they don't upgrade to shanties. So we'll probably do that. I might want to make sure to leave an extra little buffer over here so I can do that. I'm actually not sure about the size of shanties. They might be the same size. They might be completely different, so we'll end up building this in the whole area. Can you plant trees? Yes, you can. I can't do that now. Oh, no, I can. Never mind. I didn't realize we had access to the foresters right away. So foresters replant trees, which is going to be good in the long term. Job done. Scavenging done. Research, thank you very much. And you know what? You're on the edge of the map. I'll get you to go ahead and just scoot this bit over here to see what we can see. And then after, I might get you to come back and pick up the medicine. Or hopefully this new specialist, uh, maybe we can get a scavenger. That would be quite useful. Sea shanties? Yeah. Made a new discovery. Yay! Okay, fertile soil. Good. Okay. Um, we could go for communal uh, eating for the cookhouse. But again, we need water technology before we do that. Um, ice fishing. Oh yeah, this allows us to keep fishing during the winter, which is quite cool. It's an upgrade for the fishing hut, but I don't think I'll worry about that yet. I am wondering about getting, um, metal scavenging because a lot of the advanced buildings are going to need metal. So I'm actually thinking about working our way up to there. Plus then that leads us to handicrafts for when we do run out of tools and clothing, which we'll need. I think I like this idea. I'm going to queue up to here. Whether or not we build the building from centralized repairs, I don't know. We'll see. Overall, our colony is not terribly happy. A couple of people are starving. Okay, well, we have lots of food. Maybe they just couldn't access the food properly? Crowbars for the full Half-Life experience. Does that mean they're going to be head crabs too? Because that would be awful. Okay, we have a fully guarded gate. It does seem like the people who guard the gates sometimes do other things. Like... We saw these people, the people with the shield over here, these are the gate workers. We saw some of them, like, see, they're, they're carrying crates and stuff around. So I guess when we're not being attacked, they do kind of act as carriers, which is kind of nice. Because the upgraded gates use more and more slots. And I was like, well, if we're not in the middle of an attack, they're kind of wasted. Sound a little excited about head crabs? Yeah, I don't know if excitement's the right word for that. Okay, um, I think I would like some water storage. We do have net water. We, don't, we could build more water collecting, but I think what I want right now is just some storage so that we uh, we have a little bit of a buffer should something go wrong. So I'm going to put the clean water storage here because that'll bring us from 300 to 800 total storage. So we'll do that. All right, we do have... Okay, new specialist is available. Whiskey and chocolate. Is a scavenger. This is what I was saying would be really nice to have. Scavenging at 200% speed. Uh, and speed seven as well is going to be really nice. Um, with the scavenger, uh, we're, we can always get an option as far as I can tell to recruit with just money or money and food. Um, I think right now we do have a lot of food, but I think what I'm going to do is just recruit with money. Salty. He's from Twitch chat. Yeah. Uh, we got some whiskey and chocolate coming in from that one weird kid. Hey, thank you very much. Weird kid surviving the aftermath is out of early access time to make apocalypse puns. Like there's no tomorrow. 
Now that actually was stupendously good. That was stupendously good. Ah, uh, all right, so we're gonna rename you. Again, we're going to our extra life uh, donators. So it's Colonel Peace. Colonel spelled this way. Hmm. This character limit is driving me crazy. Colonel Peace, there we are. I mean, I suppose I could have respelled Colonel as like, you know, the military rank, like abbreviation, but there we go. Uh, we're gonna send you to the world map. That's gonna be an easy decision to make. Boom, and we have a lot of idlers. Okay, so first off, this scavenger, we're gonna get him to scavenge some medical supplies over here. All right. we won the battle. Video game history has defeated the bandits, which is fantastic. Um, and now this site's now available to be scavenged. Um, what I'm gonna do with you is I'm gonna reveal over okay. here and then we might send you home because you will heal if you sit at home. Now, this is an observatory over here. It generates science per hour, but to do this, this is what we use our settlers for when we build outposts. We build a science outpost in this area and would give us a trickle of science consistently, which is gonna be really nice in the long term. Speaking of science, our scientist over here has found the first neighboring colony. Dead Creek over here. Ooh, we have a reputation of minus 49 with them. See the current trade options from the trade menu. Unfriendly. Society was a western frontier town, uh, or has a western frontier town feel to it, with colonists carrying arms openly. Public executions are carried out in the town square for both law enforcement and entertainment purposes. The town's ruled by a self-appointed sheriff and mayor who upholds the charade to stay in power. So they have 73 population, travel time is here, currently unfriendly, and we can't trade right now, but we may want to set up some trade at some point. Still, for now, our scientist is gonna go check out this science location over here. And, oh, Duddy is also done. Bandits have been defeated, lovely. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the scavenging to the scavenger who's nearby. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and scout out this area here with our fighter type. Okay. We've unlocked a maintenance depot. So automatic repair and decontamination of an area. That is kind of nice if you, you can have it automatically decontaminate the outhouse without you dealing with it. But the thing is you can always manually repair and decontaminate. So I don't think the maintenance depot is a priority to build. I might be wrong, but it feels like since we can click on it anyway, it might save us material. Cause maybe the repairs don't use materials the same way as it does when we do it manually, but I suspect it's all the same. All right, our water storage is done, which is great. Now our storage cap is 800, which will give us a much better buffer. We're still gonna need more water um, supply overall, but I'm gonna wait a wee bit more before we do it. We've made a new discovery. Okay, metal scavenging is unlocked and... Complete. There you go, you've revealed a new area. Now you're injured, but you should be able to smack the hell out of the dead rats pretty well. So I'll probably get you to go and fight those. And then maybe we'll bring you home after that. We got some iodine pills, an observatory for long-term research, which is going to be really good. Okay. There's a new quest available. All right, hold on with the quest. We can get a scrapper so we can collect metal and junk from metal deposits. That I think is going to be extremely important. And ultimately, it doesn't matter where we build this because we're going to be collecting scrap from like really far away. But maybe what I'll, I'll plan on doing is build it out. You know, again, deeper into the world, because in this direction is most likely we're going to be collecting more resources in the long term. So I'll do something like that. We do have a new quest, though. Lately, an increasing number of... Do farms take water? Not regular farms, but those are vulnerable to drought. But you can get irrigation farms later on, or irrigated farms, uh, which do consume water, but um, then they don't care about fertility, which is nice. Increased number of cars been spotted in the distance, not far from the colony. We're getting all uh, Mad Max over here. There seems to be some some kind of new settlement nearby or close by. It could be a good idea to see if they're friendly or hostile. We'll follow the vehicles. What could possibly go wrong? So that's going to be a world map quest. Right over here. We'll see about that. How many bugs so far in 1.0? Well, I've killed some giant cockroaches. Other than that, no idea. Everything seems fine so far, but... It's only come out a few hours ago. <laughs> Cooney. All right, you're still picking up the food. Oh, James is infected. All right, scrapper is done over here. Lovely. So we're gonna move the work area to this. And again, we can we can tweak the area for that. And there's a chunk of metal. Was there not a bunch of metal over here? 
There is. It's in the unexplored area, but I think the fact that we can see it means it can be worked. Oh, there's tons more over here, too. All right, let's do that. Um, did we ever build the scout tower? Oh, we did, right, up here. Now, once it's built and once it's explored, I think what we can do is we can actually cancel the scout tower. Or at the very least, we can just go and kick the worker out here, which will give us an extra carrier, which I think is a good idea. Maybe we'll leave the scout tower, but we'll go and, and empty the worker. The, uh, the scout towers do get defended by the workers, which can be nice if there's, you know, any threats coming from this area. Um, uh, maybe I'll plop down a couple of others. We'll put one, say, over here. And then way on the other side of the map, out over here, we'll get those built. All cleaned up. All right, Gutty has scooted out this area. What I'm going to do... There's nothing to fight yet. What I might do is just get you to... Ooh, candy bars. Let's get you to scavenge here. You don't scavenge super quickly, but then you can go home and you can, you can heal up afterwards. Meanwhile, here we've picked up a lot of tech. Now, this tech location here will do damage. We'll take 10 points of damage for every 12 hours, but luckily we do research very quickly, so we're going to clear this out pretty quick, this sure nuclear thing. plant. But it's slightly dangerous, and that can happen. A couple of colonists infected. We do have to make some cleaning. Quill makes a mistake following the car. Turns out to be a mob bus! Luna. Oh, man, there's so many infected people. So our medical tent's having to work overtime. Could build a second one. There are upgrades we can do for it as well. One of the things will be just cleaning out the pollution, though. Okay, with that in mind. So we've unlocked metal scavenging. We might be able to wait with the handicraft. Reclaim materials is what? Upgrade the advanced scrapper. Knowing how to process different types of scrap metal means that an item thought to be trash might end up being a treasure, effectively speaking. Uh, we can even unlock all the way up to crowbars. Again, someone said for that uh, half-life feel. But the other way, trash evaluation. Going through decades of garbage in various states of decomposition is not easy. Recognizing the usable bits from actual trash is even harder, but increases plastic production quite a bit. So these are just freebie upgrades. So this lets us upgrade a recycler. This one lets us upgrade our scrapper. Which seems like a pretty good idea. Handicraft's also decent. Or... We get this, well, there's nothing that needs water yet. At some point, regardless what order we do it in, we'll have to research something that needs water and then something that provides water. I mean, although, doing this, the water towers do store more water, so it, there is some value to having it first, but I don't know. Um, education, bunk beds. We could go all the way up to communal living, build some shanties, and then make them pretty. We are going to need tools and, and clothing soon. I think so, too. Unlock the frontier outpost is also going to be beautiful. Okay, maybe we'll work our way up to Handicraft. Let's do that first. Because we're actually good on clothing and tools right now, but it will go down. I don't like the fact that so many people are getting sick! Now, are, oh, do I have a bunch of people working in an area that's near pollution? I mean, it's up there. Unless the, uh, the metal area... Yeah, see, there. I think people are walking through a polluted area to get to the metal. Um, if I build some roads, I might be able to, you know, provide a, a, a path that is a little less dangerous. That they will use. That's pretty close to the pollution. We'll do something like this. Maybe they'll use that. It'll be a little faster and they can avoid some of it. Underground plastic. Yeah, we need a plastic extractor. Uh, this recycler over here has nothing left in its area. But yeah, you can work on that plastic there. Excellent. Oh no! No, I play video games to get away from this nonsense! Ah! The first signs of a pandemic are upon us. At first it's just a cough, but then the fever picks up. People start dropping like flies and the colony grinds to a halt. Now it's a question of how quickly you react. Several staffed medical facilities can nullify it almost completely, but if left unchecked, it'll spread like wildfire. Pandemics come in waves infecting colonists. Untreated colonists will eventually die. Disease dehydrates the body, increasing colony water consumption. Uh, build enough medical facilities to treat the infected. Gather antibiotics to speed up the healing process. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build the second medical tent to increase our overall um, capacity. So I'll build one over here. Uh, that will impinge on the forest a little bit. Hopefully the efficiency... Yeah, it did actually go down if I do that, because I killed one of the trees. It's only one. Maybe I can build the forester over here. 
Uh, uh, Cancelling this won't let the tree come back. So we'll let that finish up. That's going to be for one. The other thing is if any of these guys have collected any antibiotics, we'll bring them home. We could also prioritize teching more nurse slots. So then we'd have two slots in each one of the medical tents. And we could even increase the healing speed. I'll keep going with the research we're doing now. But, yeah. Half to the well contaminated? Oh, that's that might be the problem. People accessing this well over here, that's true. That is probably what's... And, and the food over here, too. Hmm. Now, the pandemic is unrelated to, like, the pollution and disease. This is just a random event. But these colonists infected probably is from this area. Yeah. Well, we'll try to get that cleaned up, maybe. Or we can tear down this well and build one over here. Um, or maybe this is a good time for us to consider. We'll get another water collector. 84%, We can tear down that well. I'll be like, uh, was it Reagan? Tear down this wall, Gorbachev. I'll be like him. We're going to tear down this well. All right, every one of these is busy. Second medical tent is up. It'll help deal with the colonists that are currently infected and then the pandemic as well. Worker efficiency. No carriers left. The colonist is poisoned? What happened? A delirious colonist is This is a random event. Nothing we did as far as I know. A delirious colonist is carried into the camp. Something seems to have poisoned him, but he's unable to say what. Should the colony be willing to take the risk to try an experimental and intensive treatment to get the colonist healed enough to say what might have caused these symptoms? Uh, take the risk, or take things slow and steady. So this costs us a medicine. This might kill someone, or might be good. I don't know. Hey, uh, Locademus, thank you very much for the gift subs. Villain says one. Creek says two. Uh, Gamma says one. And a bunch of people say risk. Okay, take the risk, it is. Source of sickness. The information could be worth the gamble. The man is taking the treatment, but as time goes by, the condition fails to improve. Treatment has to be prolonged, and while the poisoning dissipates eventually, the wound remains infected. By the time the man regains consciousness and talks about a strange rodent bit him, the vermin is nowhere to be seen. And we end up with a colonist infected regardless. Dang it! Should We've I fire some people stuff. to get some carriers? I might have to. Okay, I'm going to go and demolish this well here. Do I want to pull back on some of these workers? Well, these guys are at some point going to stall out on their food production anyway, because they're going to hit their limit. That'll free a few up. Is there anyone else I'd want to fire? Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to lower the limit on the plastic to something like 250. And the scrap as well will set a limit to 250, although it kind of would like more workers there eventually. All right, we got some events going on. Scavenging complete here. This is medicine. It's not antibiotics, unfortunately. Uh, this is our scavenger. I guess I'm just going to get you to scavenge this clothes, because that is what you're good at. I thought one of these yes. others was done as well. Oh, yeah, actually a couple. All done. Done with the science. Great. You are slightly injured from that. But it's not so bad. Hey, anyway, you're right on the edge. I'm going to get you to just scout because you're here. We won the battle. Bandit's defeated. Now, you are fairly injured, but not too badly. You've got a few resources in hand. I think I'm going to get him to scavenge the tools here, and then I might send him home. Right away. Doesn't scavenge as quick as a scavenger, but he's going to be okay. Pandemic contagion is spreading. Handle it quickly or people will die. We've reached a mile. So we have no one infected currently. Oh, we have a baby born. And currently no one is infected. What I can always do is I could um, I, I could clear out the medical tent afterwards to get an extra carrier. We do have the one though, which hopefully isn't bad. 
There we go. Now we have two people infected. But they're seeking treatment immediately. Uh, I'm going to move this flag from this polluted area to down over here. Because that's the other thing. is people going to grab some food or walking through a polluted area. Oh, shit. What is this? Oh, I thought it was a combat symbol. Never mind. Just someone hungry. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. Except for the four infected colonists. Stupid COVID. Ruining everything all the time. The pills on the world map are iodine and they can be loaded, looted. And in fact, we will be looting it at some point here. Okay, so that's not something I can research right now. Ooh, this zone is going to be interesting because there's two different outposts that could be built here and we're going to have to make a decision about it. I think I'm going to go and pop a new How part of the help? map with Can't you. Do. Mission complete. Scavenging complete over here. So what do you've got? You've got regular medicine and basic clothing. I think what I'm going to do... Although there's tons to scavenge. I don't know. Let, let's do this. We can advance one of these main quests. Well, actually, I don't think the New Neighbors is the main quest. There's an, At some point, there'll actually be a pop-up that specifically says main quest. We got some medicine, clothes, tools. We don't have extra weapons, which is unfortunate. Uh, but overall, we're good. Oh, firewood. Resources used to keep the colony heated to cook raw food. Created by the logging camp. Hold on. So, wood and, and firewood is different. Okay. Now, right now, we're not doing anything that needs firewood. We're also not producing it. Something we're going to have to look into. More infections. I mean, should I build another medical post? Okay, we got possible research. Handicrafts in place. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the way to medical training here. We're going to want guardians, if nothing else, to get to frontier outposts. New neighbors are zombies. Well, that would be a twist, but I don't know. Maybe that's in the game. Do we have an extra housing? Okay, we've got room for two extra people. Everyone's producing, which is good. Actually, with our recycler here, yeah, you can see um, these guys are not currently working. They're just working as carriers right now because we're full on plastic. Which is nice to see. And these are our gate guards that are helping build some roads and things. The infections are growing. Come on! The pandemic event is gone, though. So made it through once again. So I think the pandemic is officially over, but we still have to treat there some infected people. <gasps> More survivors, yes. Although our water uh, numbers are negative. So we'll have to take a look at that. I should, I should really plan on building a well over here. What I should do is plan out the farming area. 100% efficiency. Actually, I'm going to cancel that. Build sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Planting crops. Select the seed. I know. One, two, three. Plan space for three of these crops right, fields right now. But I think what I can do is I can pause the construction. So I'm only going to build one of them, but I wanted the space allocated. And then with that sorted out, this is also a good place for an actual well. We can even get 100% over here. We build that. We might be able to get a second one. Yeah, we'll be able to get a second one over there afterwards, and that's going to be kind of nice. All right, one adult, two children, three elders. Risk gate. of dying natural causes help the colony's workers, but they no longer reproduce. Okay, so they can still work, which is good. They're bringing some canned fruit, a hunting rifle, and some candy bars. I can't say no to that. We've reached a milestone. We now have some homelessness, though. I guess we're still just going to work on, on a few more of these tents, and eventually all the tents will be replaced. But for now, we'll do that, which will cover everything. Got candy bars, now you need whiskey. Oh, that'll be what we need. Yeah, so got some infections, some homelessness. But the fields are being worked on, which is good. We do have negative water. Here, let's actually prioritize the well, please. Although we don't actually have a lot in the construction queue. And over here, yeah, they're waiting for more workers to come in and replace. Because our plastic count is now below 250, so they're going to start. Specialist ready for action. Mission complete. This is our scavenger. Alright, I'm going to pop this story event. 
There's our, oh, those are antibiotics. Well, let's pop this, follow the cards first. What could possibly go wrong? Found something. Tire tracks are easy to follow and lead to a small settlement still under construction. The guard stops the specialist at the entrance. Sorry, but we aren't letting any new people in. If you're looking for worker supplies, though, we might have a proposition for you. One of our vehicles hasn't returned yet, and we assume that the crew's gotten lost somewhere. If you track them down and find out what's going on, you can have a share of the loot they're transporting. Okay, we'll search the vehicle. That sounds fun. Job done. Job done. Yeah, you've got a few things sitting around, and you're slightly injured. I'm going to tell uh, Video Game History here to return to the camp. You scooted out some more, and you can science this. You'll take a little bit of damage, but I think it's going to okay. be worth it. And then we can always send you to the base Job afterwards. Done. And Gutty, the, fire, the fighter, has found a ton of candy bars. Hey, yeah. Slightly damaged, and you've got some loot. We're going to return you to the colony. And honestly, I'm, I'm starting to feel like we might get attacked soon, so kind of itching to get some extra defenses. Why take a share when you can take the whole car? Well, who knows? Maybe we'll have a decision for it. Guardian tech completed. We're now researching nurses which will give us extra slots in these medical tents, but more importantly, then leads to the thing that increases the speed at which people are um, are treated, which is going to be nice. Okay, choose our first seed. So you do gain access to more seeds from trade or various events and things like that as we go forward. Right now we have access to corn, raw vegetable. Corn or maize is a fast grower that can yield multiple small harvests in a short amount of time. Um, we also have potatoes. Potatoes provide decent harvest as the edible parts are underground. It is very resistant to withering during catastrophes. So you can see the difference. The growth rate on corn is much higher, but potatoes are more resilient. Otherwise, they are identical. Then finally, we do have flax, flax, which leads to fiber. Now, we are getting a little bit of fiber from our hunting, so we're good on that right now. But once we start bulk clothing generation, we probably will want a flax thing. For now, um, our food source is actually fairly stable currently. I'm going to go with potatoes because you know what the great thing about potatoes? I mean, you can boil them, mash them, Put them in a stew. Potato gumbo. Fried. Sorry, I'm getting confused with the uh, Forrest Gump. Potatoes. And of course you can make vodka with them. And vodka will give you resistance to radiation or something. Pretty sure I learned about that in a video game one time. Mm, roast and beef dripping. Oh my God, you're making me so hungry. Why is it every one of our streams always turns into a food stream? Every single one. Shoot them out of potato cannons. All right, construction uh -huh. completed. The water well. Malnutrition. Okay, colonists need a varied diet, both vegetables and meat. Make sure you're steadily providing both options, which we are, because we're picking berries. Soon we're going to be growing potatoes. Uh, and we are hunting uh, venison or whatever as well. So we got a bit of a mix. Malnutrition, serious condition, lead to death when prolonged. Meals have much higher nutrition content than raw food. Meals can be produced by cookhouse, unlocked from the tech tree, which will also need access to water. So that might be the direction that we work in going forward. Um, we do have access to the tailor and the tool shop now. Um... I'm, at some point, these tools that people are using are going to start decaying. I might be a little bit more worried about that first. I don't know. What else do we unlock? A guard post, which is pretty good. Uh, we've got some metal coming in. I guess ultimately we'll build both. Although we don't really have the work. Shit! Colony under attack! Now, I'm kind of expecting... Oh, no. It's actual bandits. Sometimes the attacks are not wild creatures. Or, sorry. Sometimes the attacks are wild creatures. Wolfgang Bandit, sneaking ambusher with long range weapons. So we have a bouton we can hit here, alarm, puts the entire colony to alarm state. Colonists run for cover while available guards and specialists target hostiles in a larger area. Inflict It does inflict colony wide happiness penalties because, you know, we're telling everyone to hide in their house. But let's do that. It'd be great if we had some call, some, uh, some of these dudes. He's about to get there. Actually, two of our specialists are about to get home, but maybe not in time. Um, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have built more guard posts, right? Protects your colony against enemies, reveals surrounding terrain. So this is an upgraded scout tower. Um, guards patrol around the building and react to threats. A nearby automatically or when commanded can be equipped with weapons to increase damage dealt. Oh, well, live and learn or don't live and then learn that way. The, there are attacks that come at the gate, but then sometimes you do get ambushed from behind as well, because I mean, you know, it's a wide area but it is more common for things to happen at the gate side. Uh, we still have a home? Oh, that's because this isn't built yet. Oh, man. Oh, no! 
There is also a rodent of unusual size over here. Fierce mouse. All right, Max over here is in combat. Let's name Max. I'm not gonna name all the colonists, but Max is fighting. It's Ren Pendragon. Pendragon. There you go. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. We just named you and everything. You actually have a hunting rifle. Good, 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 good. This rat's still around. Oh my god, there's so many of them! His health's at a hunt. Oh, now he's taking damage. They might have been focusing on the building, but now? Rhyme. Are specialists home yet? Not yet. Nearly. Right, we'll fast forward here. Oh my god. Okay, Hazel died of an infection. Oh, this is critically damaged. Uh, let's repair that. Colony under attack. Well, see, guard. Are you still fighting? Or are you just sent someone sent to help me? I guess you're injured, maybe you can't fight anymore. We've made a new discovery. Yay, new technology. That's entirely what we're looking for right now. Nurse research complete. You're fighting. You're kind of stalled out. Idling. Rhyme's about to die. I'm thinking he was knocked out. Rhyme Pet Dragon has died. Oh, specialist ready for action. Okay, well, whoever it is. Oh, Report. go home. Return to colony. You too. Sounds good. What's up? What's up? Moving. There we go. We're gonna be fine. Uh, she's too far away. You're yeah. You're still gonna go there. Okay. Our specialists are back. They're gonna be able to fight some of these bad guys off. Because there's so many bad guys out there. Okay, so they don't stick around forever. I've actually never failed to defend uh, my colony like this. Okay, we're gonna release everyone. Hopefully the repairs will happen quickly. We got an event as well. Ghost Recently Town. arrived survivor has been plagued by nightmares. <clears throat> Clearly we're gonna have to build some guard towers so this doesn't happen again. Uh, recently arrived survivors have been plagued by nightmares. So he's been having dreams of a ghost town he passed by to get here. All the inhabitants have perished, and he took a few heirlooms with him as a souvenir. Now, however, he's convinced he's haunted by these artifacts and asked a small party to be sent out to return to memorabilia back to the town. He insists, insists the spirits can only be calm this way. There are dark circles around his eyes, and he looks to be on the verge of collapsing from exhaustion. We can take a pragmatic approach, which I'm thinking might be just take the relics for ourselves. We can appease the rest of the spirits, or there's no time for this nonsense. Take a pragmatic approach. Obviously, the ghosts aren't to blame for the man's sudden nightmares. The man is sent to the medic to overgo an evaluation, and afterwards, another colonist who used to be a counselor volunteers to help out the man. After a few sessions of talking about things that have happened to him, as well as his anxieties, his sleep begins to improve. After a few weeks, the nightmares seem to have all but disappeared. Happy, the colonist willingly hands over the things he took from the town, as well as some his, his personal belongings pay back for the help. So we get some clothing and some nuts and bolts. What is this? Oh, parts. Nice. Oh, there's a critically damaged scout tower as well. Well, let's repair that. And then we might upgrade you to a guard tower. In fact, that's going to be the plan. That's going to put out the fire as well, so, you know. Um, please accelerate the repairs. Oh, someone else started working on it. Okay, good. No free carriers, I know. Whew! All right. Colonist died. Colonist died. Damn it. Of infection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear down this medical tent. And instead, I'll just hire a second worker at this one. We've made a new discovery. New tech. Medical training complete. That's going to be good. So we heal 25% faster. That's going to be wonderful. Um, we could get maybe guard patrols for the extra work slots. I don't know, I kind of want to work towards the cookhouse. Do 
that, and then we'll get the uh, the water technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Life. Yeah, we'll work towards the cookhouse here. Medical training done. Task build. I mean, it's just a tutorial thing. I mean, we can ignore it if we wanted to, but I do want a cookhouse. Oh, I can get a new specialist. Yes, please. Stella, another scientist. Okay. Sure. I mean, at this point, I'll basically just recruit whoever. If it turns out we have an excess of something, what's going to happen is we're going to um, upgrade them to settlers later on. Uh, ooh, these are new neighbors. Oh, that's the lost vehicle. Okay, let's send you All right. over there, and then you can scout the other area. And are we still sending you home? Yeah, you still have a bunch of stuff kicking around. So we'll go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, Gunty, I'm going to send you back out. Yes. Colonel Peace, I'm going to send you back out. I might keep... Vi Actually, if I'm going to keep anyone around... Ready. Hang on. Gunty, you stay here. Ready. I'm going to send out a uh, video game uh, historian, because he's got higher mobility. But we might keep a specialist in the base. So for now, Gunty, you can go and just... Uh, yeah, just go and grab at this wood over here. Your command. Shoot. How may I help? So video game historian who is good at fighting things. But there's nothing for him to fight right now. Oh, there's a car over here. That's not the lost vehicle. The, the car does let you move around the map a lot faster. Oh, there's research to be done over there. All right, I'm just going to send video game historian to Roger. collect some loot over here. Yep. And the scavenger's going to collect this loot because he'll take less damage because he'll have to spend less time doing it. I think that's going to be okay. Okay, we do have some dead people, so you know what we have to do? We have to get ourselves a burial pit. Modest burial pit where colonists are laid to rest after their earthly struggles come to an end. Having a decent final resting place for those who have passed away gives some comfort to the living. Destroying the pit will cause a happiness penalty to the entire colony. Corpse decay fully in roughly one week, clearing space for those more recently deceased. Does cause some pollution. Um, we can have it at the front gate. This is kind of a rotten kind of area over here, so I'm just going to build it. I'm going to build it out over here. Maybe not literally right next to an existing building. It's already a highly polluted area, so we'll do that. All right, communal eating being researched, so we'll have to research that, and then we'll have to research the water tech for the water tower so that we can actually get that going on. Built in a radiation zone. Then we can get zombie. Oh, shit. I just realized I killed that road. Hang on. Cancel. Do you want zombies? This is how you get zombies. There we go, like that. Not for random wood piles. That's the berry picking. Yeah, there's still some berries over here, so I guess that's fine for now. Three carriers. Not many, but should do okay. Water production's good. We got good amount of food. It's funny that like the production always seems to be lower than the consumption, but I'm thinking it's probably production from the fishing pier or something, like, and not counting things that come in fits and starts. I don't know. Communal eating complete. Now what we need to do before we even bother building it is we have to get to... We have to get the water pipes, but at least that's fast. Mission complete. More tech. Let me get her to collect the Sounds fuel. Good. Oh, over here. Yeah, I guess they would walk through that pollution. Well, no, there would be some. Shit, you're right. I guess this is pretty clean. Let's do that instead. I just assumed they'd be smart enough to path around the pollution, but no, of course not. Now, hopefully this area... Well, I still think it's okay to put it there. Yeah, it's not right in the middle of the pollution. You see, they can mostly skirt around it. Although I don't think they do. Okay, guard post is built over here. Where's one of our dead bodies as well. Do I want to sign a second guard? Mm, no, I'm just going to leave the one. Outhouse is contaminated, so let's clear that. That just has to be done from time to time. There you go. Burial pit is in place. Because we have to bury a bunch of dead. Um, I don't think I ever got around to building the warehouse. Are we being attacked again? 
Oh, no, there's people gathering outside the gate. Desperate times. These people have clearly been through a lot. They look frail and likely easy to overpower, but the look on their faces make it clear they're desperate enough to do anything. At the front, a weary woman speaks up. Please, we won't last much longer. Can you spare a little food? We have tons of food. Let's just give them some food. The travelers don't seem to believe their eyes as the food is carried out to them. Thank you, thank you so much. It's not much, but please take this. The woman hands over some silver. The group heads off with heavier pockets and lighter hearts. You have 300 money for this. See, it pays to be nice sometimes, but only sometimes. Okay, water pipe tech is ready. So, I'm gonna put cookhouse over here because it feels like we've got a little bit of like a residential area kind of developing right here and it's not gonna use any of your fertile uh, space. Plus it is close to a water source as well. So, I'm gonna build the cookhouse, which does need water. Prepares warm meals from raw ingredients. Meals are not only a good way to offer as diverse and nutritious food palette as possible, but also makes life more comfortable. So we'll do that. And then if we go over to water and we do a water tower, which holds 500 water, but also, oh, it won't show it, I think, until the cookhouse is built. Let me build the cookout first, cookhouse first, and then it'll become a little bit more obvious what's gonna happen with the water tower here. Bandit raid, prepare for battle. Bandits and other hostile folks will pay you visits from time to time. There's a good chance these conflicts will escalate into a firefight. Gather specialists and guards, arm the gate, or try to buy some time by burning the bandits. When a battle breaks out, you can set an alarm state to keep your colonists safe during combat. So do we see them at the front? Well, we still have Gutty in the base, which is going to be good. Gutty, why don't we make yourself useful? Pick some berries over here. Tech-wise, work our way towards power, but I don't think I want to do that. I'm wondering... We get extra guard slots. It might be time to build a frontier outpost. You know what? Let's do this. I know we're talking about some space for the housing. I'm not worried about it. We'll figure something else out. Let's get the frontier outpost because before the stream ends, I want to show off how that works. Are you being irradiated by something over here? No, I mean, we've got nothing going over here. Why is there a radiated guy wandering this way? I mean, there's always a little bit of pollution everywhere, so maybe. Specialist ready on the map. Uh huh. Stella over here. Oh, yes. What do we have here? New neighbors. So this is the missing vehicle. The area pointed out by the guards is empty, but upon closer inspection, a set of tracks lead to a small clearing with the missing car and its crew. Please don't hurt us. We don't mean any harm. Our car broke down and we got into a bit of an accident. Now we're lost on top of that, a young man with a broken arm explains. So no matter who we send, we always have this option one, which in this case is draw them a map. I haven't done this event, but I've seen other events like it. Then, depending on the skill of your person, you can do one of these. If you don't have a skilled person, you can come back later and then return. So if we came here with, say, a scout, we could return and then come back later with scientists. But we'll draw them a map and treat the arm. The man's broken arm gets treated right away with a makeshift splint. Thank you, ouch! The man winces as he's being patched up. The group offers resources in exchange for the map, and the young man slips in some extra silver. So we get the, looks like some sort of jerky, maybe bug meat, I don't know, and then a bunch of silver in here as well. Jerky and cockroaches, mmm! Delicious, delicious cockroaches. I could send you back for the food. I think what I might do, uh, let's let's have you scavenge the iodine over here. Actually, that seems like a fairly good idea. Uh, video game hero. I'm actually wondering if I should be returning you to the colony though, because we apparently the tutorial is indicating we might get attacked soon. So I don't know. Well, we need more um, more citizens here. Now we could fire some of these jobs. No one's sick right now. Like, we could get rid of all of our medical staff entirely until there's something that goes on. That seems really dangerous. I'm going to keep at least one in here. And same thing, if there's nothing to be buried. Well, that's the thing. These guys, if there's there's nothing to be buried, they do work as a carrier, which is what he's doing here. So that's actually kind of okay. Frontier Outpost. So we're going to take a look at... Uh... Oh, no, we're researching it. It's not done yet. Never mind. Fire some more workers. I don't know. I think you know what? I'm gonna trim back on these bad boys. Did that give us a worker over here again? Okay, good. 
building needs water. Okay, so you can see here, this building is complaining because it doesn't have access to water. So what we have to do is build the water tower. And now that it's built, you can see the little pipe connection. So this whole area, especially if I say build it, maybe not at max range, just in case of like other building, you can see there's a bit of a, it's hard to see the circle, but I'm gonna build it here. Cause if there's other buildings need water, then we'll have some in the nearby area. Your orders. We'll get Guddy to help with the construction since we don't have enough idlers. And with the cookhouse, we have the option of vegetable meals and meat meals. Um, now we have, we actually have more meat than anything else right now. So we'll go and do that. But theoretically, I guess you would build, you could build two cookhouses for maximum of variety perhaps. Okay, frontier outposts are done. I'm gonna build one of those right away. So there's not much left to the stream. And I wanna be able to showcase this outpost. Um, in the polluted area, maybe. You know, I'll just build it here. I don't think you have a front. There, done. Mmm, fried cockroaches. There you go. So there's a water tower over here, which and this is connected by pipe. So this is now going to produce. So it's going to consume three raw food and also consumes firewood, which means, boy, we need more workers because I absolutely need a logging camp at this point. Um, cause that turns wood into firewood. Boop. And I think it is time for us to actually get that warehouse down as well, which we never did let complete. I think I can build it. Oh no, that's a whole campfire. So I don't have room over there. Here, I'll build it up over here. And then my specialist. Please construct this. And speaking of specialists, Mission complete. Colonel's ready to go over here. Going. You're a scavenger. We're gonna keep you scavenging. Yes. Stella. I think was gonna collect okay. these iodine pills for me. Okay. Wait, I don't have enough material for the. Oh, it's just metal. Okay, which is still trickling in. from the scrapper. Be great to have another employee over. Oh no! Stupid rocks! Ah! Uh, why do the heavens hate us? All right, I need to fire some workers from something. Or get more. We've like expanded more than our population supports. Your orders. Could lower some of these limits. I think I'm just gonna get rid of one of these people working the recycler. Okay, so now we have someone working the logging camp, which is good because we need firewood. Mission complete. Mission complete. Why don't you go ahead and pop this? Can we get materials from the space rock? That would be nice. Oh, uh, oh this is just to pick up wood, which we don't really need a ton of. Is there some safe wood over here? No, all of the wood gathering is going to be past the pollution site now. Oh, no, there's a little bit over there. Although, it's right next to some pollution as well. Now, I don't actually have to worry about this working. This this is just idle carriers are going to go to these areas and collect wood. But we've got a good amount, so we may not stress about it. All right. Fighter, fighter. Okay, we're going to... Gutty over here, I think you're going to become our first settler. Oh, I can't. I don't have our outpost done yet. We need one more piece of metal to be delivered. And we're gonna make our first settler just in time for the stream to end and showcase how that mechanic works. We might get attacked one more time too, I don't know. But we do have our two fighters currently at home, which maybe would be better if one of them was out, but kind of worried about getting killed here. All done. Colonel Peace. Let's go and get these tools here. Still waiting for that last bit of metal. From 
the scrapper. There we go. That's done. Oh, and we got an event. What is this? What is with this guy? They're pulling a big pile of fur, paws, and teeth behind them. The living bear. We found Benny here lying unconscious in the forest, probably drugged by some sort of hunter's bait. We can try to tame him and make it or want a wear bear. Wait, 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 wait. We have an unconscious bear. I mean, we gotta try to tame it. What could possibly go wrong? The other colonists let their curiosity get the best of them, so they gather around to observe how the bear will react upon waking up. What? This is the stupidest thing ever! The moment it opens its eyes, it realizes it's being surrounded, tears off the restraints, and leaps to its feet, teeth exposed, and deep guttural roar rumbling down its throat. Wow, our people are really stupid. I assumed we were gonna cage it or something. Yeah, we're under attack. Uh, no kidding. Alert, 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 alert. It's an enormous, it's not just a regular bear, it's an enormous bear. It's unbearably huge and dangerous. It's a good thing we have our specialists. All right. Connie's triumphed over its enemies. And the other thing we can do is our little, um, our food stockpile can collect the bear meat. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna go and, oh, you're still building. Build faster. Time for bear steaks. Mm. Bear's one of those things I think that can be really dangerous. It can carry, um, a parasite that is like really brutal okay so we're going to create our first settler over here now you want to choose what you use i guess here's the thing not not to talk crap about gutty but he's clearly not as good as a video game historian he's like worse stats in every single way so you're going to be converted into a settler over here reporting in so now we've got this settler on the map we no longer have gutty we can send them into a region. So if you mouse over, you see on the right side of the screen, it says, well, the right's that way, mirror image. It says sector info and it says buildable. So we can't over here, it says blocked, buildable, blocked, buildable. So each one of these sort of provinces or zones, we can build one outpost in. Now, and there, we've got some flexibility. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this zone over here. We're gonna get some passive science going on. So I'm gonna move, oops, move them over here. Now, now that he's in this zone, we're going to click Build Outpost. We get a list of all the buildable outposts. Research. So this only will give you science if there's an observatory in the zone. So there is, so we'll get science from it. Transport Station. This gives you a place where your, um, your specialists that are running around the map can drop off resources uh, so they don't have to go all the way back to your home base. Survivor Outpost generates new citizens. So basically every day and a half, we will get new, one new unit of population. You don't have to click on it to send them to your base. So, which is kind of nice because sometimes when you're overwhelmed, you may not want the extras. I think they can bank up to 10. So you can bank up a bunch and then send them to your base. And we do, we know we need more people. Medical outpost over here is where your specialists on the map can go and heal rather than going home. And scavengers outpost, you see it says no production in the sector. This is what, um, well, you can't, I, I can't pan the map right now because of the build mode. This little site over here will just give us some extra, you know, free supply contingently trickling in. But we'll build a research outpost over here. So we'll get a little bit of passive science coming in. Or no, not that one. Outpost is now what am I thinking of? We did see one somewhere. Oh, over here. This is a place where you could build one of those outpost centers, the scavenger's outpost. But there, now we have passive science. I have my mouse over here. You can see I've got some passive science production. 50 every day, because it was, it was saying 25 per 12 hours. But 50 per 24 hour period. Just coming in. Now that specialist is gone forever. But we know we get more specialists from time to time. So, you know, your extra ones, your duplicates, the people who don't have as good stats, uh, especially as maybe maybe you let this fill up a whole bunch before you start converting people into the settlers. But at the same time, it is really nice to have some passive science come in. So you kind of want to unlock the frontier outposts relatively early, because at some point you might run out of just like science you can randomly pick up around the map. So you might want to make sure to budget in your plans to get the frontier outposts unlocked so you can get the steady supply in. Secure storage, better uh, better general storage, withstands the elements and thieves, flushing, better toilets, all pretty good stuff. I know for a fact fairly soon we are going to need the access to concrete. 
Although at the same time, we could do the better housing and we could demolish all of our tents, rebuild our shanties, and then uh, include the decorations in our design. So I might actually do that. Go to communal living, and then after that, back out. Because I think the happier the population is, the more babies they might make. I'm not sure. Because that would be a nice source of some passive um, colonists as well. And yeah, we, I mean, we can keep clicking on this, create a new settler, and keep going. Each, each settler makes one outpost. But you only need to build one outpost depot. I mean, you literally are only allowed to build the one because there's no point in building more than one. Again, we have no carriers, which is annoying. Be nice to have some more peeps. Oh yeah, the uh, bear carcass has now been completely uh, polished off, but this is still in berry range, which is good. I mean, we have a stupid amounts of food. In fact, I could cancel the farming over here just because our food's coming in very solidly. Uh, what I could do is put a, a limit on how many you know raw potatoes we keep going around. I mean, and then it'll stop work, but I don't think there's much reason to do that. This work area, oh yeah, this is just the wood collection one, which we want to avoid some of the pollution. What might be good too, after we do the housing, we might want to work our way up to the, uh, is it this category? I don't remember what category it's under. Yeah, hazmat engineering. This will let us clear pollution on the map. Okay, bunk beds is done. So let's take a look what the size of these things are. Oh no, bunk beds is the upgraded tent. So we can upgrade to a crowded tent, which is not very happy making, but fits twice as many. So it goes from three to six in the tents. That's not what I'm teching for. I'm teching for the next thing. Let's set up logging enforcers. Um. Maybe? I mean, we've got plenty of wood right now. Uh, the thing I definitely needed to set up is logging camp to turn wood into firewood. That's important. But now that that's done, we'll set up the logging and forcing probably a little bit later. Mission complete. Good job. I'd like to do a scientist with this one. Tell you what then, let's Heck. do a scout over here with you because you're within range. So we're wrapping up soon. As a reminder, this was a sponsored stream. And if you yourself want to pick up Survive in the Aftermath, which is officially released 1.0 today and is available on a number of different platforms, you can do exclamation mark what game or click on the graphic of Survive in the Aftermath just below over here. Um, there's not going to be a live stream tomorrow. Normally we stream on Wednesdays. Not streaming tomorrow because we stream today and we're streaming on Thursday. Thursday is going to be Empire of Sin. There's a new expansion uh, that has come out. Uh, I believe it's called Making It Count. I think they've added a new uh, a new crime boss who's like a corrupt accountant. I mean, what a silly thing. Corrupt accounting? Ooh, this colonist died. Oh, of old age. Well, all right, at least we're not to blame for that one, but we still, we kind of need more people rather than having people keel over. Maybe, you know what I should probably do? Well, I don't want to sacrifice video game um, historian because he's really good. Oh, perfect. Let's recruit another specialist. It's another fighter. Okay, we're gonna recruit you. You know, I should probably use food since we have so much of it. Uh, Colonel, oh, Colonel's Job piece. Done. Let's keep having you scavenge. Uh, I'm not gonna rename Prowler because I'm instantly gonna convert her into a settler. Oh, they have the same stats, but she actually recovers HP not as quickly. So, you're going to get converted into a settler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you to a province that doesn't really have... Any, there we go. This one here has no ability for us to get science or scavenging. And what I'm going to do with you... Perfect. Is I'm going to get you to build an outpost that is a survivor outpost to generate more people. See, this actually says 0.31 instead of 0.30. I wonder what this is based on. Oh, outpost resources. 0.3. Is that the entire sectors like that? Yeah, okay, planes. Oh, so this, this one here, the wasteland is only two pips or survivors. This one is three. Lots of science over here. Okay, so three seems decent. It's not much of a difference, but it is some. So we're going to build the survivor outpost over here so we can get a regular trickle of people into our base from over here. Outpost is now complete. 
So yeah, every now and again, this is gonna accrue, one, two, three, et cetera, survivors. And so every now and again, we wanna click, come over here and click this button and send some new people over to our base. So now we've got a constant trickle of survivors and a constant trickle of science. So even if everything else sort of starts to like fall aside, even if we had to bring all of our specialists home to defend the base, which we are keeping video game historian here for now, but even if we had to send everyone home to defend the base, um, then we'd be okay. Let me go and like cancel all those jobs. Eh. We do need some defenders over here, and at least they do work as carriers in between things. So I guess it's going to have to be okay. But yeah, even if we had to keep everyone at home, we know we'd be getting some extra stuff. Especially if we set up the scavenging outpost at some point, so we get a trickle of some resources. That'll also be good. Although at some point, we just start building our own, so it's going to be alright. Okay, I'm going to fire you to get an explicit carrier. Oh, and we got a new adult. That's going to be good. We'll have to maybe rehire some people at the guard station here if we get attacked. But for now, let's leave it empty. I don't know. We've got a... Um, whoops. We've got a, uh, a scouting tower somewhere over here, too. You. I'm going to fire you. Did we have another one? Did we demolish it? I can't remember if I built one over here. I don't see it, because it's not that. What about over here? Yeah. I'm going to fire you. There we go. I should have done that a while ago, because we don't really need these to be occupied. There. And that'll give us some extra carriers, which is really nice. I could even just go and hire more people for some of these buildings, but we're kind of okay. Fibers is still good. We got lots of fibers. Uh, plastic is good. Uh, if anything, actually, we'd probably want a second one of the scrapper to get metal a little bit more quickly. That actually seems like a good idea, especially with the distance they have to walk over here. I think that's going to be good. Uh, we have no science currently right now. We are researching education, which is good. We at least, and we know we get a trickle of science, but hopefully we'll get more. There's a good science location on the map that we can pop with our uh, with our scientists here, Oxamo. Although we may want to bring her home soon for some healing. Well, we have, that's right. We've also got Stella, a scientist, on the map, although she's currently scavenging. Boom, 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 boom. We've got our water over here. We've got tons of water stored. We're at 800 of 800. Stored for buildings is good, too. Cookhouse is doing some things. Resources on the way. Uh, it's a production limit on meals. I don't know, like 100 cooked meals kicking around. And who's done? Oh, that's Stella. Right, she got the medicine. She's holding on to a, quite a few things. And she's not near a science site, so I'm going to have Stella return to the colony to drop off all this loot, and then we'll send her out back again afterwards. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with this. When are we picking this up again? I don't know. We're really going to have to take a look at our schedule here going forward to make some decisions about what we're going to continue. Right now, this is only kind of a one-off, just because we've got so many things going on. Because, uh, yeah, we got Empire Sin. Like, no matter what, we're streaming Empire Sin um, in two days. We, there's the new Hearts of Iron 4 expansion coming out soon. Uh, so you can... There's going to be some content for that, for sure. Uh, I still haven't started the Origins Let's Play for EU4. And... I know for a fact I want to start a Crusader Kings 3 run because the people who contribute to the Extra Life with the $75 level, um, they are going to be used specifically for um, our, our Dynasty members in the Crusader Kings 3 run. But I might wait for the, was it, something Court expansion or something like that, right? For CK3? So I don't know. <laughs> I want to play everything. Always the problem. What a terrible problem for us to have, right? But it's true. Uh, medicine run. Given the constant need for medicine and other supplies, some colonists have suggested someone be sent to search a nearby ghost town. It's a small rundown hospital with hopefully some medicine left to loot and hopefully not too many ghosts. So that's another uh, world map quest right over here. I'll have to send someone there. We should probably send a scientist there just thematically, right? So yeah. Anyway, this brings us to the end of our stream. There's two hours planned for this. Uh, obviously, like, we've barely, barely touched the surface because... There's so much more tech tree left in every single category. We haven't even started the main quest. At some point, we'll get one of those pop-ups, just like this little purple thing, but it'll explicitly be named the main quest, and it has a whole series of exploration on the world map and things to do. Um, we haven't even been attacked that many times. We never even set up trading with the other colonies. Like, there's so much to this game, which I like. And then you get the replayability of the different configurations as well, which is kind of nice. Is my sub icon a Brussels sprout now? Yes, Bart of Blarney! You have a lovely little Brussels sprout next to your name for the four year subscriber badge. Hey, Stella, congratulations to new parents. Oh, cool. Erica was born. Huzzah! Woo! Woo! I 
of info can we get on them? Conditions, needs, traits, hermit. New survivor groups cause anxiety. Your colony born. Yeah, what other traits do we have kicking around? I actually don't know what's available. Selfless, rarely gets tired. Plus 20% health. You're educated for bonus production speed. Nice. And again, we can build a school as well, which gives people more of these traits, which is really, really, really wonderful um, and helpful. We got a little bit of irradiation going on. It's okay, we just got ghouls, that's all. You know, we're just, we're, we're Fallout now. But yeah, I think the next thing I would like to do um, is gain access to hazmat engineering, but I think this needs electricity. The environmental station needs electricity. And I think some of these might need concrete. The reinforced gate's pretty good. It actually doesn't even need material. It just makes your gate stronger. You can work more guards. But yeah, we clearly need to work our way up to solar panels. Either through directed heat, which lets us heat up our buildings. We haven't had problems with a cold snap yet, which has been very good. Um, and then, But there's also large drums, which give us better clean water storage overall. I, don't, I think I'd probably go through directed heat into solar power. And then after that, um, switch, like, start using buildings that need some power. So we'll see. Bar to Blarney, this is a sponsored stream. So I try to avoid any specific sort of review type statements because obviously, you know, that would be the ethical thing to go about things. Uh, but I will say I only take sponsored gigs for games I do enjoy. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up over here, folks. Uh, I'm going to see you guys in two days for some Empire Sin, also sponsored by Paradox. And then Saturday should be a normal stream where we play... I don't know what we're gonna play on Saturday. That's actually a good question. Our Dwarf Fortress run is done. Rip everyone, but we got a great tale of an epic legendary sock out of it. So Saturday will be something. I think we're gonna do some multiplayer Super Auto Pets during that though. So uh, Super Auto Pets is free. Download it, learn it, watch my video. We're probably gonna do a little bit of that and then something else. Um, and then, yeah, there's gonna be a bunch more content coming out. Could be some Darkest Dungeon. I don't know, man. I don't know. Stay tuned, watch the Twitter, watch the Discord if you're on the Discord, and I'll see you soon. Uh, thanks for coming out, everyone. Thanks everyone who resubbed, everyone who contributed to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. I'll see you in a few days, two days. No stream tomorrow. Bye-bye.